Hey y'all, out at uh, Griffey's Hot Rod Shop and uh, Restoration, and I did a, uh, I did a, a video on a uh, town and country Woody that uh, they're getting, they're doing a total restoration on, and uh, when the first video I shot, it just come in, and uh, Larry called me the other day and said that uh, they had gotten it tore down, uh, not all the way, but quite a bit of the way, and that uh, it might be a good time to come in and check in on it. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So give me just a couple of minutes to run Larry down and uh, I'll take a look at this. It's pretty interesting stuff going on with it. Larry, how are you, brother? <laughs> Good, Scotty. How are you doing? Not too bad. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about this hot rod you got here. Well, this one is a uh, 1947 Chrysler Town & Country convertible, which is a Woody. Right. Um, Utilizes, of course, the steel fenders, hood, cowl, steel floor pans, wheel wells, trunk floor. But the actual body structure itself, the doors, quarter panels, trunk, all that portion there, is truly a wooden car. And uh, as you can see, we've got it stripped down. We, we are going to do a complete restoration on it, but prior to disassembling it any further than we have, we wanted to go ahead and make repairs to the wood structure get it repaired and get it back up in a good solid shape where it needed to be and then we will place a steel structure inside it so we can actually lift it off the frame and then carry on with sandblasting the frame and building the motor and you know doing the fenders and paint and body and then putting it back together so I got you that's the reason we haven't disassembled it and took the body off the frame we want to do all these repairs with the body setting on the frame so you know where it is and you know keep everything square and exactly. all that kind of stuff right so this frame that you'll build to lift it off that won't stay on the car when it goes back and no, no. that frame will come off no this but what this will do it'll tie this quarter to this it'll come through here and have two long bars that come up here tie in somewhere underneath the dash we'll probably go through the dash what that does is makes it so when you pick this up with the crane over here you're not folding up the floor pan and moving the wood. Oh, in other words, that wood, there's nothing to hold this car. If you pick it up in the middle, it'll go that way. If you pick it up on each end, it'll bend this way. Like a pipe pan. Yeah. These gaps. And what you want to do is you want to make it a hard top, but it's a convertible. Right. We always put that in any of the convertibles, even a steel convertible car like a 57 oh, Chevrolet. We, yeah. we put a steel structure in it so when you lift that off the frame, it'll stay where you put it. Right. And so you can put it on a rotisserie and turn it up and you can work on it without moving it around. What kind of metal will you use to do that? Probably we'll use two by four square box tubing, three sixteenths wall or something like that for the two main rails and we'll come across through here and we'll probably some two by two square box across this side and then we'll probably put a brace X brace it in here some way to make sure we hold it. Because what how you, do you mount, do, how, how do you mount that to the wood? Well we'll come back in here, we can drill the mount into here, we okay. can drill the mount into here. We can go down to this steel structure right here on the floor and actually weld to it. Okay. Or bolt into it, either one. And of course, the cow panels are steel, so we can go in there and, and actually weld into those. And then once, once it's all painted, put back on the frame, we'll do it in an area where we can cut that weld loose, prime back, and repaint that. You know, right. for protection, but it right. won't be on a uh, area that's seen. That's seen. Right, right. And what are you doing with these metal bars here in the door? Is that something that was normally there? No. That's not, uh, that's something that Jeff and I come up with an idea of doing that to try to make that, and Jeff created these pieces. What this does, these doors originally, and these cars all wanted to sag down. When you open the door on them, they're all wood. Right. And no matter how well you put this wood together, over time, the weight of this door is very heavy, so it's trying to weight it down. It's trying to pull everything loose here. Right. By putting... By making these steel braces down here, steel here, and going up here, and tying it in with a steel piece here, what we have done is triangulated that door so technically the door is self-supporting. Okay. Okay. In with steel, steel won't sag. Right. Okay. This is a heavy wall tubing. Right. Now we also incorporated down here a nut and a jacking plate. If in the event that this wood tends to want to settle over a period of time, if you look at it now, you'll see the door shuts right in there right where it needs to be. Right. If over a period of time or with moisture or with various varying uh, humidity and barometric pressure and all that kind of stuff, if the wood wants to settle or expand, we can actually take the door panel off and loosen or tighten this in order to raise or lower. Oh, wow. So 
that's an that's added thing. That, that's, that's that's something they did not have in them originally. Right. But it'd been a good uh, idea. We've done. We try to do this on any cars that are that have wooden structures. A lot of these cars, like vintage cars, like locomobiles and Piraceros and things, will have wood just like this. Right. But it'll have a aluminum generally on those cars. Will be an aluminum skin that goes over. Oh, okay. This one does it. Of course, it has a metal panel in here that, that gets a wood grain. Right. As you can see here, this is what it kind of looks like. But, right. Um, so now is that going to be a veneer or is that like a vinyl? On the early '47s and the '46s, this was actually a mahogany veneer over a piece of metal. Okay. In '47, mid '47 and '48, they went to what they called a die knock which is nothing more than a vinyl taping product, much like your later model Woody cars and Chryslers right. and Chevrolets and Fords you used up in the late 50s and 60s. When right. They had so it's like a vinyl, like, a, like vinyl. a sticker, yeah. But you can't get that anymore either. We're probably, this is going to, we have contemplated actually doing veneer over the metal panels. So the problem you get into, this one wouldn't be too difficult. This panel wouldn't be too difficult. This panel goes from a compound to a convex curve. All right. And it's going to be, we have the sheet metal panel, and if we had a set of dies that they used to stamp the sheet metal panel, we could actually steam up the veneer and clamp it and probably make it shape to it and glue it. But without that, it's going to be very, very difficult to ever shape that veneer to match that metal. I know what So saying. we're probably going to do those in wood grain like uh, dashes were done in most cases, which okay. we have a uh, person we work with, uh, Lynn Mays and Morristown, is very, very good uh, with his wood graining and can match the grains. It will look just like mahogany veneer. Right. Now you say that, is that going to be a paint process? Or it a... is a painting process. Okay. It's, it's right. done, it's a wood graining process, just like uh, a, lot of your, a lot of your antique cars that had wooden, wood grain dashes and garnish moldings and various things were not wood. Right. They were metal that were right. grained onto it. Right. Burled dashes that the Fords used, uh, Chrysler's used a lot of it, uh, Lincoln's, all of that material, that was a, uh, a, 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 it was a wood graining process, but it was not, wood. It was done with paints, chemicals, dyes, stains. I got you. I got you. So, it. so tell me, uh, have you had to rebuild this whole door here? Uh, Jeff has actually made repairs on this one. He's replaced all of this wood here. He's replaced all this inner structure wood. This entire inner structure portion down here, he reproduced every bit of this down here, the whole bottom on this door. Now on that door over there, the bottom was better, but he actually cut the whole top off of that door and reproduced the whole entire top portion of that door. We have pictures that shows he actually cut this door off right here and made this entire piece right here. Wow. And made it all boards up. As you see, if you look to your left there, that's what he started with was uh, roughly one by eight uh, white ash boards. And, and is he a carpenter or is he a body guy? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be both, I'm he guessing. Actually, uh, he actually spent about 20 years in Florida as a carpenter, uh, building houses. His father was a contractor. And then he got into the, to the uh, car business down there and started doing body work, paint work and stuff. And then he moved up here and, and came to work for me about six years ago. And he almost got to be a cabinet maker or something, so he, though. Yeah. He's, he's, like most of the guys that work for me, they're multi-talented. They can weld, they can fabricate, they can paint. Right. They can do a little bit of everything and have done a little bit of everything. But Jeff's, Jeff's got a knack with wood. He likes guns. So right. He's done gun stocks for quite some time. Oh, I gotcha. So he's, you know, had some experience in that. And, uh, and But he's done an excellent job reproducing these finger joints. This is original finger joints, just like that's where it was and that's the way it was put together. But he made this piece and this piece. All this bottom piece. Holy smokes. Uh, he made all of this piece. As I say, he made this entire piece here. And what, what these are, this is not one piece of wood that it's cut out of. You take all these boards and plane them. You take all these boards and plane them. 
and then you clamp them all up. As you can see here, he's got oh, okay. pieces clamped and glued. Right. Okay. And then once you get them all clamped and glued, then you machine them down either by hand or by grinders or cutters or planers or whatever you choose to use to get it roughed into shape. Right. And then you start contouring. But this board, when he started with it, was about that wide and about that tall. Holy cow. And he cut and contoured. He shaped all that down there too? Was, yeah. Wow. So. So you have to have special woodworking tools to do this? Or you make them do it with what you got? Well, we, we've done with what we had. We borrowed some, we bought some. We have, uh, between what we had and what he, what Jeff had, and Kevin's dad had some tools. And so we've been able to make do. We have a friend of ours that owns a cabinet shop, but so far we've not had to call on him to do. We've, Jeff's been able to get most of that done. So as these things go, what, uh, was this in good shape or bad shape? Really and truly, this was probably as good a one as you're going to run across to restore. In that the wood wasn't rotted down and gone; it had been patched and refinished over the years. And it was the trunk. The trunk's really bad. He's got it all disassembled, as you can see here. And the trunk was one of the worst pieces. But it, these doors were bad. Um, it was one of those things that looked deceptively good right. until you stood there and looked at it for a while and even after the guy bought the car and brought it, had it delivered here with the transporter and got here and got to look at it, and he said, it's not near as good a wood as I thought it was. But as the car goes, it's a super solid car. The floor pans, the steel floor pans are in excellent condition. Uh, the wheel wells are in excellent condition. Cows, the sheet metal and all on the car is very, very nice. So it's going to... So the metal's solid on it. The metal is very solid. It's going to require a minimum amount of Right. You know, the typical sandblasting, cleaning, stripping, refinishing, straightening dents, body work, and all that sort so of So, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a piece of cake after this, but the woodworking is going to be the major thing to get behind you. On this project, yes, it yes. is. Wow. Unlike, unlike a lot of the street rod stuff that we're fabricating and making and modifying and changing, a lot of that's all metal you're trying to create, and right. this is wood, so... Once we get the wood done on this, this will be more or less disassemble, clean, detail, fluff and puff. Try to research and make sure we've got the correct things and the correct wiring and the correct colors and that sort of thing. Yeah, because this car is not going to go to car shows. This is going to go to concourse shows. Yes, this will go to uh, Amelia Island. It'll go to Hilton Head Concourse. It'll go to Keeneland, uh, possibly to Pebble Beach. Uh, they, they use these cars out there, so there's a good chance it'll go to Pebble Beach. And so. Cool. Yeah, obviously it's going to go back to the same color maroon and all. Yeah. Yeah, That's it. this was originally a maroon car. We've got the build sheet on it. We got that from Chrysler here just a week or so ago. We got the original build sheet and verifying the number on it, what color was on it. Uh, wow. You wouldn't even think they kept build sheets no, back then. No, they actually have uh, Chrysler Research and, and there's a Chrysler Club and they were able to get all of those old files and they have, it, it took about two or two and a half months for the owner to get it, but they finally sent it to me and it, it told me what the options were on the car pretty much and how it was and when it was built, what day it was produced. Oh, no kidding. Wow. At. What plant was it produced at? Like it produced in Oregon. Oh, wow. Close to the wood. What kind of options did it have any? I mean, did it have air conditioning, power steering? What kind of stuff was even available? No, it had spotlight mirrors. It's got dual spotlight mirrors on it. That was an option. That was an option. Uh, got the heat unit, had radio, an option. Uh, really, there wasn't a whole lot of options. The cars originally were fairly heavy options as far as the chrome. It had bumper guards, which was an option. So would have this been a uh, top of the line kind of a car, you yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, it wouldn't be an entry level type of no, car. No, the town and country convertibles, uh, I think in 47 they produced, I don't quote them, but I think it was either 6200 or 6400 is all they built. Wow. And what motor does it have in it? It has a straight eight in it, flathead straight eight. That's a Chrysler motor? Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's the original windshield washer bottle. Yes, it is. No, okay. it is. It is like the original. I like, yeah. Whether it is the original one that come on the car, I don't know, but it is the correct one. 
It appears to be the correct mounting for the pictures and the various things that we've looked at on it. it. Appears to be the correct one. Yeah, you know that's the thing. You got to on a street rod. You got to make it cool and pleasing to the eye. But this has got to be exactly the same way it was. Yeah. I mean that's what they judge on, right? Yes. Little details, just silly stuff, you know. Yeah. Correct colors of wiring. Correct colors of bolts. Correct heads on the bolts. Um, correct placement of clamps. Correct type of clamps on water hoses and things like that. Wow. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's very detailed as far right. as, you know, whether it's right or wrong, not right. necessarily whether it looked pretty. Yeah, wrong. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not about that. It's about taking it back to original. And having the right finish was the clamps cad plated, were they black oxide, were they oh, this, wow. that, or another. And you got all that information? Well, on every one of these cars, it's different. We just went through, uh, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it's a triple A fuel injected project that we just did. We just went through research and all that and, and got it at King or at uh, All Park and one best in class was it. And you know, you go through all that stuff for a 57 Chevrolet, it's one way. Right. This car will be different, so we will have to research and try to find what's the correct bolts, if they've been changed. Fortunately this car appears to be pretty much all original. So you know we're we're marking, bagging taking everything apart, marking what it is, what bolt it is, where it came from, and everything. So a lot of those bolts will probably have blasted and have them re-cad uh, plated or re-black oxide or whatever they were originally in order to put it back. So you're taking it off, putting it right back on the way it was, making notes. Right, and and a lot of times you don't know this stuff till you go to a show and you get, you know, you get a judge who happens to be an expert on this particular right, right. vehicle. And he and, and a lot of times he'll tell you, you know, the car looks great, it's, he did a wonderful job, it's an excellent restoration, but you need to change this hose and this hose, and, you know, this needs to be changed. And sometimes it's just a process of elimination. You have to go in order to be able to find out. And right. It's almost impossible sometimes to be able to research even with the internet enough to find out everything before you take it to the show. Tell me, the big question is, how much longer do you think Ford's done? Yeah, this will, this will take a year to 18 months. I mean, okay. that's what I've told you on it. We started on it about six weeks ago, I guess. Okay. You know, it's a, it's a, probably it'll be a 12, 14, 15 month process. Okay. Might go a little quicker than that, just depends on, once we get through this wood, the metal part may go well. One of the things we're going to have to send the motor out because we don't do engines in house. We right. do machine work on engines, so we've got to find someone. This this motor has Babbitt bearing, in other words, rather than uh, crank bearings or inserts, it has Babbitt port bearings. So it's going to have to go to an engine builder who's capable of doing the Babbitt and check it and see if it needs it, and then and then build the motor. Okay. Because it's crazy. It runs and it drives and it sounds good to be quite honest, but. We're going to go ahead and, you know, go through the motor. Uh, it would be stupid not to. Oh, most definitely, yeah. All right. Well, we'll follow it all the way through. I sure appreciate you calling me and uh, letting me come out and get an update on it. Sure. Yeah. That's a cool way to see this car at this point. So, anyways, hope you all have enjoyed it. We've got, uh, you know, we'll check on it a couple more times before it's done. But uh, hopefully, like uh, Larry says, maybe a year and a half, two years from now, we'll have a completed car and... Uh, you know something to that you know like i said you followed it all the way through you've seen all the work and that way you know the work that it took to make it look the way that it did so anyways hope you all enjoyed it see ya